JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, alleged gunsmith in custody of a Jarrett Lane gun bust. A man remains in custody following Friday's siege of a cache of firearms and ammunition in the Jarrett Lane section of Mountain View. The police say the siege has dealt another blow to the criminal underworld and is a significant development in the constabulary's ongoing pushback on criminal gangs in the country. Following an intensive intelligence gathering process, the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Branch, CTOC, with support from special operations and other formations, raided an address in Jarrett Lane, where nine assorted firearms, a quantity of ammunition, among other military paraphernalia, was seized. One man was taken into custody in relation to the seizure. The police say the main target of the operation was a repairman in the criminal underworld who has been known to fix firearms for various gangs across the country. They say it has been quite elusive. The latest development is part of the police's continuing counter-gang strategy of targeting persons who comprise the critical support systems of criminal organizations. The police say they'll continue to focus significant assets on identifying and pursuing for prosecution individuals or groups that are involved in enabling the criminal gangs, particularly with firearms and ammunition. Police seized gun and ammunition in St. Anne. An investigation is currently underway following the discovery of a Glock 38 semi-automatic pistol with a magazine containing 6.45 cartridges, which was seized during a targeted raid in Lilyfield, St. Anne on Thursday. Reports from the Bamboo Police are that the gun and ammunition were found wrapped in transparent plastic among trees. Between the hours of 10.30 and 11.30 a.m., no arrest has been made. No arrest in pregnant woman's killing. Law enforcers say they have not had any breakthroughs with their investigations into the brutal killing of a pregnant woman who was shot dead in downtown Kingston last month. The deceased, 26-year-old Shantivia Griffiths, was killed at the intersection of Horin and Wood Streets on her way home from work. Head of the Kingston Central Police Division, Superintendent Beresford Williams, said that investigations are still being conducted into the killing. We haven't made an arrest in that matter as yet. Superintendent Williams said, we are still doing some groundwork. Several stories have been making the rounds in the public sphere following the killing. Police say they are following several leads. It was reported that about 6.36 p.m., Griffiths, who reportedly worked at a store in Orange Street, was walking along the roadway when an armed man on foot approached and shot her multiple times. She was taken to hospital, where she was pronounced dead. Mother pleads for return of son's body. Convinced that her missing son, Omario Williams, was murdered, Francine Tomlinson said she's appealing to residents of the Kingston community to assist her in locating his remains. Williams, who was 17 when he disappeared, went missing on September 17, 2021. My son did innocent and people reportedly hear my cry for help and know what happened. In a September, we got was asking for help to find him and everybody more shot. But just want to know my son Barry, so we can get closure and put him to rest properly, she said. Reports from the Stadium Gardens Police in St. Andrew are that at 3.15 p.m., Williams was last seen on Eastwood Park Road in the parish. All efforts to locate him have proven futile. A relative said that when she spoke to him on the day he disappeared, he told her that he had received a call from someone he knew in the Kingston community that he should visit. He said somebody I go send one care of pick him up at half a tree. I'm going to tell him something I go come with him. He tell me say I know him I go. He know people down there. He sent me a please call me later and ask if I leave out yet. When I talk to me, somebody asked me who I talked to and him tell him who I was, she said. The relative said that William sent her a second message to confirm that he reached his destination. But when she tried calling him, his phone rang without answer. Concerned, she visited the community. Everybody said they don't know him when I showed him the picture. It was just one person who said them see him, but persons were looking at him away so him stop talk. I reached out to the person who knew him, but them said they never see him, she said. A few weeks later, the family said persons from the community told them that they saw Williams being beaten by a group of men. People said gunman did a dry man who was crying for help. Them said them lock up in them house and everybody shut them out. They said them shoot him and bury him in a makeshift grave, the relatives said. The family said they did not immediately report what they heard to the police because they did not want the persons responsible for Williams' disappearance to hurt him. However, they eventually shared everything with investigators, but now feel it may be too late. Murderers for hire making big money, says Kamish. With more than 60 murders recorded since the start of the year, Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson says the police have set sights on the tri-parish area in the West 
and the southern belt of the corporate area for extra policing. Anderson was speaking to journalists after the handover ceremony of medical equipment to the Jamaica Constabulary Force from the Pan American Health Authority on Friday. He said Westmoreland, Hanover and St. James. In addition to the St. Andrew South, Kingston West, Kingston Central and Kingston East Police Divisions have selected themselves as areas of concern and focus for the JCF. The Commissioner said concerns have also arisen in the St. Catherine South and North Police Divisions and that the force has moved some assets there to bring that down. Anderson said the killings, 92% of which have been committed using the gun, have been largely gang-related. He also said that a number of them involve murder for hire deals. What's more than this something we have to move on, and we are. I've deployed an additional 47 officers down there. We're looking at the leadership team there to reinforce it and build it. So they're getting a lot of attention, the commissioner noted. The Southern Crescent is an issue. As you know, we have put in the zones in central Kingston. Again, these zones take a lot of assets for reasonable small areas. That is why we manage or we implement them over time. At the same time, he reiterated concern for the spate of murders that have so far been committed, but said that his worry does not stop there. Anderson said specific plans are being orchestrated to push back against the violence being witnessed. He added that these plans go beyond boots on the ground. We don't have a phenomenon of murders. We have people killing people. They're out there. They are murderers and some of them are doing it for hire. There is no intervention that is going to assist them. These people make money from what they do and big money, he said. Noting that the force must forge partnerships with the community by creating pathways and intervening to limit the number of people going into criminality. New police station to be constructed in Lokovia, St. Elizabeth. The government is to construct a new police station in Lokovia, St. Elizabeth at a cost of $200 million to further strengthen the crime-fighting capacity of the police in the division. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, made the disclosure during a tour of St. Elizabeth on Thursday. He told journalists that work on the new police station will start this year, noting that the upgrading of police infrastructure and facilities are imperative to reducing crime and violence. We took a look at the site. It has been on the map for some time and we expect to start this year. So, we are ready to go with that aspect of it, Chang said. In addition, he pointed out that there are plans to bolster and expand CCTV surveillance that has already been installed in Black River and Santa Cruz to support the police in identifying criminals as well as solving incidents of crime. Now that it is operating, we need to do everything to make it more efficient and effective. It was installed as a project and now the police have to take charge to ensure that it is operated fully in St. Elizabeth, Chang said. In Black River, it will make a significant contribution to give the police better information and to therefore a very strong tool in crime fighting, he added. In the meantime, Chang lauded the work of the police in St. Elizabeth over the years. He said the men and women of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, are taking the required steps to achieve a sustainable reduction in crime and violence. We just came out of what is called the Christmas season, which is one of the hardest times for policing. Police personnel are out here seeking to keep peace and public safety. They have had some challenges, but we are aware and I'm aware that the police have the intelligence, the information, and are working at apprehending the hardcore criminals out there, Chang said. We are looking at what we're investing in the JCF to improve efficiencies and capabilities, and I think it's going well and there's more to come in that area, he added. The tour to the National Security Minister to the Junction, Santa Cruz and the Black River Police Stations, as well as the site for the Lokovia Police Station. Jamaica reports 1,267 new COVID cases, five deaths. The Ministry of Health and Wellness reported 1,267 new COVID-19 cases and five more deaths on Friday, January 14, bringing the infection total to 110,250 and the total deaths to 2,522. The new cases include 776 females and 419 males with ages ranging from 2 months to 98 years. The gender classification in one case is awaiting confirmation. The positivity rate was 59.6%. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew, 358, St. Catherine, 279, St. James, 113, St. Mary, 88, Manchester, 81, St. Elizabeth, 81, St. Thomas, 55, Hanover 47, St. Anne 44, Trelawney 37, Westmoreland 37, Clarendon 33, and Portland 14. 
the deceased are a 70 year old male from St. Catherine, a 69 year old male from St. Anne, a 33 year old female from St. Anne, a 70 year old male from Portland, and a 79 year old female from Kingston and St. Andrew. According to the ministry, the deaths occurred between August 9, 2021, and January 13, 2022. In the meantime, 101 more people recovered in the last 24 hours, bringing total recoveries to 67,047. Currently, 424 people are hospitalized, 46 of which are severely ill, while 8 are critically ill and 85 are moderately ill. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.